So the question that everybody wants answered. Is M1 good for coding? But before we start this video, I actually want to let you guys know that this video is being sponsored by DataCamp. DataCamp is an online learning platform that makes it easy for you guys to go on and build some data analytical skills at your own pace with interactive courses. There are no previous skills needed. You can learn anything as simple as Excel 101 or anything as far as database manipulation. Regardless of the industry or career that you are in right now or wherever you are in the stages of your career, data analytical skills are necessary in order for you to excel in your professional life. So you guys should join DataCamp right now to stand out from the peers and really, really excel yourselves. DataCamp is offering every first chapter of every course that they have for free and after that, they offer it a subscription that's $12 a month. And the best part, there is no credit card required to sign up. Also, no special software needed. You can use DataCamp and go through all of their courses all within the browser. So there's nothing extra that you need to download. So like I said in the video, if you guys are looking to excel your professional careers and improve on a skill like something like working in spreadsheets, I think DataCamp is going to be the one platform that you guys are going to benefit from. You can head to the link in the description and check it out. Sign up if you guys are interested. But like I said, I think this is gonna be a great platform for all of you guys to learn on and excel in your professional careers. Honestly, for the past week or so, I've been working with M1 on the Mac Mini, coding on it a little bit, and the answer is yes and no. Oh geez, okay. In this video, I'm going to give you some of my thoughts, run you down some of the things that I've noted, and just my overall verdict when it comes to if coding on any of the M1 Macs is worth it, and what I'm seeing in terms of the future. So the initial thoughts when M1 was launched, as far as coding, was that everything was gonna be super fast, snappy, you know, M1 was super optimized and it just made things so much more efficient. And I can just say right now from the past week and a half that I've been working with M1 that it is kind of the case, but when it comes to coding, I'm not noticing any slowdowns, but I'm also not noticing any crazy fast speeds. I primarily work in VS code, so I can't say anything when it comes to any of the other IDEs. I know that Android Studio isn't fully compatible just yet with Apple Silicon, or I can't say that Xcode is crazy fast either, but I will say that Xcode is probably better optimized on Apple Silicon than say VS Code Atom or Android Studio. So if you're an iOS developer, you're probably having a grand old time right now on Xcode and coding on M1. <laughs> But for the rest of us that don't do iOS, we have some issues. Before I get into the issues, let me just touch a little bit on my experiences. So like I said before, I primarily code in VS code and I do front end development. I don't do any back end. I don't do anything like crazy, crazy intensive where build times are just like out of this world. So the only thing I can comment on right now is front end development. So if you're looking for anything else, this video would not be for you. So we're gonna touch on VS code right now and a little bit on the compatibility side of things. VS code still still runs on Rosetta. And for those of you who don't know what Rosetta is, it's pretty much the translation layer that runs on M1 that allows it to run x86 or Intel based applications still on Apple Silicon. That way you don't have to run some sort of VM to run all of these apps that still aren't supported yet, which is pretty extensive right now. As far as VS Code, it can run on Rosetta. It's not optimized, but it still runs and I don't notice any hitches. In terms of the resources, I will say that the CPU is be being used a lot more on M1 than the RAM. I will preface this with saying that I do have the base model M1 Mac mini. And, you know, initial thoughts was, I don't know if this is going to handle things really well, even though everything's on that new SOC pool. But I will say everything's pretty, pretty efficient. Aside from the fact that the CPU usage spikes up sometimes, you know, working in React primarily, things aren't that bad. Even when I'm running with Google Chrome, as most of us know, Google Chrome might set things on fire sometimes with the RAM usage, but RAM usage wasn't all that bad. I didn't dig too deep into the swap memory, which is great. You know, you never really want to dig too deep into the swap, but I never found myself in a scenario where I dug so far in where I was like, okay, I got to restart and I have to dial back a little bit. Everything was fine. The compiler was great. I was hot loading on the websites just fine and doing my normal things on the day to day, just like I do on the MacBook. Now, the one nice thing I will say about coding on the M1s right now is that the fan is almost like zero to none. I can't hear you. 
right? Like I can barely hear this thing when it runs. The MacBook, it kind of just spins whenever it wants to, or whenever it sees that there's high intensive uh, applications running right now, even when I'm just coding. So when I start up my, when I start up my servers running my NPM scripts, like I noticed that the fans just kind of kick in and that's that. With M1, I haven't heard a peep, even when I'm video editing, that thing is just silent. So that's one of the greater aspects when it comes to M1, especially for coding, is having that silent environment and you don't have to deal with the fans is beautiful. Now, as far as compatibility, let's touch on that a little bit because that is probably the bigger topic here when it comes to coding in relation to M1 Max. So off the bat, NPM is supported, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm able to run my NPM scripts just fine, install packages that I need, all the lot different libraries I may need in React, and that's fine. I don't have to worry about that, and I installed that pretty seamlessly. Git obviously supported. You had to down I had to download that through some of the developer tools through Xcode, which took a while, but those were okay and supported off the bat. So I'm using my terminal just fine like I would on my MacBook Pro. The one thing that kind of was a downside as of right now is that Homebrew is actually not fully supported just yet. For those who don't know, Homebrew is a package manager that people use to install and manage some of their packages that they install. And right now, some and most of those packages are not supported on Apple Silicon yet. So, you know, if you try to go to the homepage, it will just tell you that it's not fully supported on M1. And that's kind of a downside for me because I do use Homebrew fairly often for installing some packages. So as of right now of the recording of this video, Homebrew is not fully supported on M1 just yet. And another big one that deters a lot of engineers right now is going to be Docker. Docker is not supported by Apple Silicon at the time of this recording, and they are currently working on getting it supported, but I think they're running into some hiccups based off of their last updates. They're trying to get a beta version out of their desktop app so that Docker can work on M1, but right now, a lot of engineers that I know are not switching to M1 for this reason because they need those containers and Docker primarily in order to function and you know develop their app. So if you use Docker on a daily basis, I would stay away from M1 as of right now, but later down the line, we will definitely see some Docker compatibility with M1. So I would not count it out just yet. Also, just a quick note, you know, for software developers, obviously we like to have multiple monitors. I like to have my ultra wide. I like to have multiple monitors here, especially when we're coding. It just makes life a lot easier, makes us more efficient as developers. The Mac mini that I have right now, that supports up to two displays, one through Thunderbolt and one through HDMI. The the M1 Mac laptop, so the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, actually only support up to a single display right now through Thunderbolt. So if you are using more than one ex external display, this is going to deter you a lot as you know you would want to make sure that your laptop utilizes multiple displays, especially if you want a mobile workstation. For me, the Mac mini is fine. The fact that I'm able to support this ultra wide resolution out the box through Thunderbolt is great. I have no complaints there. That would definitely turn me off if I had a laptop that could only support a single display. So be wary of that. If that's going to turn you off, wait on the M1 for a little bit, especially if you run multiple displays. Let's see if we can add some compatibility to that and add that as a new feature so that we can get multiple displays on M1. So what's the final verdict here for me? Honestly, I think it's too early to say. I think it's too early to say whether or not M1 is bad or really, really good for coding. I think if we look at it in terms of the future, I think M1 is going to later down the line show its true power in terms of coding once we work out some of the compatibility issues, work out some of the kinks, and a lot of these different companies and applications start coming over to Apple Silicon and developing and uh, making sure that we can run these apps natively on M1. Once we get to that point, I think that, like I said, we're going to start to finally see M1's true colors and see that, hey, this thing is so, so efficient and very, very powerful. A lot of companies I feel like are gonna be switching their devices over to M1 just because of the sheer efficiency and power that this thing is very capable of. The fact that I'm not noticing any small hitches on a base model Mac with 256 gigs of drive space and eight gigs of RAM is pretty awesome, right? I would definitely notice eight, eight gigs of RAM being hitches anywhere else on Intel-based systems, but the fact that eight gigs can run pretty Pretty efficiently when I'm coding and when I'm video editing and I'm doing those things pretty intensively. I think that's something to definitely look forward to and it's something very promising for the future. That being said, if you guys have any questions on M1 or if there's anything else you guys want me to test or you you have an opinion on M1, put them down in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys and connect with you more on this sort of topic. Other than that, I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.